Hi, I'm in LibreOffice Base and I've connected to my Postgres database and I want to make a query uh, based on some of the data that is in my Mod 7 schema. So I go to Queries and I'll go Create Query in Design View and I'll just collapse uh, that schema, expand the Mod 7 schema and the two tables I'm interested in are Parcels and the Fin table. And I'll just go Close for now. Now, if I were to run the query right now, I get a lot of rows back because of a cross product being formed because I have not yet specified how to join these two. I want to join them on parcels ID uh, equaling parcels ID. So this would be the foreign key, and this is the primary key, as you can see with the key symbol. I'm just going to drag it across and drop it on. Now, always uh, double check the line double click on it to make sure that it did pick the right columns and it did here. It's doing an inner join which is fine. I'll go OK. What I want to do is select parcels ID from the parcels table. I'm going to pick soil code and uh, from the final table and the fin area. Now I'll just run that Right, to see what happens. Uh, I'm going to hit the last record button here. I get 488 rows. I can see that I have quite a, uh, a few for a particular parcel. So what I want to do is roll, those up, roll that up. Uh, I want this query in the end to have one row per parcel. So to do that in the function I'll have to group by parcel and group by soil code. I guess uh, I'll have based on the combination of soil code and parcels uh, roll up the area. So again this is also group and what I want to do with fin area is to sum it. There's some right there. I'll just click off so that sort of say. I'm also going to alias the column or, or uh, uh, give it a different name and just call it area and we'll just run that and we'll go last record and we've dropped down to 281. Now say I was going to save this query too so we'll call it query we'll call it parcel report and say I want to just run it. This is for all the lots but uh, the users are usually interested in one lot so I can put 96 in. Save that and run it. So I'll just do it one more time. 96 and remember to click off so that it is saved. And now I just see the ones for 96. So I'm going to save that and just sort of walk through your scenario. So what if a person wanted to run the report for 101? So they would have to edit it, come in here, 101, remember to click off, save it. Uh, and if they didn't want this view, right, close it, double click on it, if they just wanted the output. Now that can get quite cumbersome if if the standard workflow for the users is to enter a lot number and quickly get a report for that particular lot. So what we can do is actually add a parameter to this query and that sort of uh, makes the entering of that value for lot number a little bit more dynamic. And so what we do is down in Criterion it begins with a colon that's the trigger that a parameter is going to be entered. I'll go uh, lot number because they often call it lot number versus parcel ID. Uh, again I click off and we'll save that and I'll close it and now when I run it the user is prompted well what lot are you interested in? So I can go 96 and go OK. Uh, and if they were interested in another lot they can hit the recycle button here or refresh button it looks grayed out but it's actually active right so I'll just click it and I can now go 101. I'll do it again and do a part uh, say 30 parcel 32 or lot 32 and so we can see that that makes the query a little bit more dynamic in terms of if this is how the users are typically entering 
or working with the data in terms of quickly querying based on a, a sort of a key value that they know. Um, and if it's business data, they do usually have these numbers sort of bouncing around in their head um, because they work with the data all the time. And so that just shows you how you can add a parameter uh, to a query to make it a little bit more dynamic at runtime and a little bit easier for the users. This concludes this video.